Okay, so today we're going to look at sampling, uh, specifically how to sample drums on the Logic Pro X new sampler, which came in a couple of years ago, changed from the EXS24. Got some sampling drum assets here on the desktop that you should have, and these are the samples we're going to use for this first stage. The first thing you've got to do is open up Logic Pro, go to File, and then you go New, and you come up like this and you want to create a new software instrument an empty channel strip and create now at this point it would be a good idea to save your work so you go to file save save as type in sampling tutorial your name that's your setup now the first thing we want to do is we're going to import and truncate a loop truncate means to trim the start and end points of the sample. We're going to start with the drum loop sampling tutorial one. You can either drag it into the actual arrangement window and then it'll create a track. There it is. So it comes in like that. And so what do you want to do? We want to get it into a quick sampler first, which is the Q sampler. And we can just use the original one here like that. And then that will open it up into the sampler page. Now, what we're going to do first is we're going to look at the different types of sampling mode. I'm going to play the, the sample now from the keyboard. There we go, that's the original pitch. So there's different sampling modes. We've got classic, which is what we're in at the moment. And that means that when you play a sample, say at C3, which is what I'm doing there, it will play at the normal speed. And if I play an octave down, it plays it half speed. You hear it, so you've got those sort of slowing down artifacts. And if I play it an octave higher, it plays it really fast. Okay, so the, the length of the sample changes depending on what pitch I play it on. Okay, if we go to one shot, it's the same, except that you don't have to hold down the key. It'll just play it to the end of the sample. So that's good for individual drum sounds, if you like. And the next one we've got here is Slice. Now what that does is it chops up the loop into individual little bits. So it looks at the transient points, these points here, the highest points and cuts them and each slice is given a pitch d1 c sharp c1 and each one if you can play them individually like that okay now we're going to come back to slice but at the moment we're just going to look at the classic mode at the moment okay so we've looked at these three things here let's just go down to the root key this is the key at which it will play at the original pitch which is c3 that one there I could change that if I wanted I could change to a2 now if I play a2 that's now the original pitch okay I'll put it back to c3 because that's kind of normal we've got a few other features here you can reverse the sample playing the verse button so now if I play it I play it backwards okay and you can loop it as well within the sampler so it'll get to the end and loop so we're not going to use that either at the moment so no loop at the moment okay so what we need to do is we need to truncate the loop the truncate is actually getting the beginning and the end in the right places so let's listen to the loop again see there's an extra beat you can count it one two three four one all right so we need this sample to end at the end of beat four before the other one comes in so we just take this little icon here and we move it to the left just before the beat the last beat and now when i play now we can check that uh just close this little window that comes up we can put it in loop mode now and uh, if we just hold down a key it should loop nicely it's pretty good so excellent so take the no loop off so let's draw a trigger note to trigger this sample so we've got c3 at the moment i'm just going to close that for a minute now if we go here this is our this is our sampling um, instrument creates midi region and that creates a little green midi region c3 c3 is the root key uh, if you right click or command click create note and there it is and you basically just want to end that at the beginning of bar two the end of bar one make a little one bar loop using the cycle and there we've got a loop Ah, not in time. Okay, so now what you've got to do is try and get it in time. So we're going to do it the old fashioned way first, which is using pitch. Try and pitch that into 120 BPM. So stop this video and do that. 
Okay, so to get it in time at 120 BPM, I've had to pitch it up one semitone and 10 cents. So that's, that's okay, that's acceptable, doesn't sound too different. But let's try a different tempo. Let's try doing it at 170 BPM. Oh, right, okay, so I've got to speed it up loads. Close enough. It's going up plus seven and plus 11. And the thing is, it sounds a bit weird now because it's so high pitched. So we have to get around that somehow. And how do we do that? Let's just go back a step. Let's go back to 120 BPM. Let's put this course down to zero. So we know this is slightly out of time. It doesn't matter at this moment. Right? And now we're, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do some time stretching. So first thing you gotta do, which is really important because we've been messing around with the pitching, you go up to the settings here and reanalyze transients and tempo. Okay, so that'll just clear the board of any kind of metadata that might be on the sample. Okay, so then you press the flex time button, which is time stretching essentially. Put that on there and you follow the tempo now. So, right, so that sounds fine. We're at zero cents. Now, if I play at a, an octave below, say I'm playing at C2. It's still in time even though I played it at a lower pitch. Sounds really weird. And the same if I do it an octave higher. But nearby, that's fine pitching, but also it means I can play at different tempos. So if I put this back up to 170 BPM, it's not got that pinky and perky effect. You see? Okay, so the next thing I want you to do, which is the last little bit uh, uh, messing around with this, is find that note again. Chop it in half, put one to F2, and then copy it using the Alt key up to E3. So I'm triggering the sample, I'm only playing the first half. But I'm just using a time stretching effect. Kind of interesting. So what we've covered there is the first kind of level of drum sampling or loop sampling. We've taken a loop, we've imported it into Logic, we've truncated it to the right length, we've pitched it up, we've pitched it down, we've reversed it, we've looked at loop, and we've looked at time stretching. Next, we're gonna look at multi-sampling and spanning samples across a keyboard.